Hi everybody, this is Joshua Kirk, back with you guys once again on YouTube, and now it's time for, I don't know what episode of Album of the Day this is, let me think about it, um, I think this is probably, um, I think this is probably episode 24 of Album of the Day, but I'm not sure, but that's not really important, because we're here to do a review here of an album. Sorry I have not done reviews in a while, because I've taken a long break, you know, I kind of, there was a part of me that needed a break, and then a part of me just wanted to do more reviews. So I decided to do more reviews and, uh, you know, see if um, I get inspiration to do more reviews here on this channel. Because I know all you guys miss me, so I decided, why not do a review? Especially because I love to do these, and I want to do them more often. So that's the goal I'm setting for myself. Um... But before we get into the review, I just want to do a shout out to um, Bloodshot Records. Um, I'm wearing a t-shirt for Bloodshot Records. Um, they sent me that shirt along with some CDs, a couple of vinyls, including a vinyl version of Wreck Your Life by the Old 97s, which I reviewed recently. Um, and uh, I just, you know, wanted to give them a shout out because, um, you know... I'd like to thank them for appreciating my review of the old 97's album, Wreck Your Life. The album sounds even better on vinyl, like I put it on the turntable recently. Excellent album, even better on vinyl. So I'd like to thank them for the shirt, and the vinyls, and the CDs, and the nice letter they sent me, like uh, most of the other people that send me stuff do. Like, uh, another reason I love doing these reviews is because of the fact that it allows people to, uh, you know, draw attention from me. So, it, um, so, yeah, I'm really happy with, uh, everybody who has sent me stuff over the years and sent me nice letters and commented on my videos, so, so, you know, I'm really happy about all that, so, thank all of you for that. So I'd like to thank all of you for that. But, aside from that, let's get on to the review. So today's artist is an artist that I've always wanted to review, that I love with all my heart. Um, uh, the artist's name is Jack White. I'm sure you guys know who he is, I hope. If you don't, well, chances are you probably don't have enough knowledge about music, and you probably don't watch the Grammys or anything like that, because Jack White's really uh, one guy who's like uh, the king of like garage rock and uh, blues rock. Um, like, um, he knows how to play the blues very well, but he's a very talented musician. He plays like about 20 different instruments. Uh, so I'm here to review his debut solo album, which was released in 2005. No, not 2005, 2012, I'm sorry. Released on April 24th, 2012. Released on April 24th, 2012. Sorry if I said that again. Um, but the album is called Blunderbuss, and um, this was released on Third Man Records, which is Jack White's own record label, along with Columbia Records, um, and it was recorded in Nashville, Tennessee, which is where Jack White's from. Some people claim that he's from Detroit because the White Stripes were from Detroit, but he's actually not from Detroit. He's now from Nashville, Tennessee, and he has a record store there called Third Man Records, which I visited when I went to Nashville last year cool, cool record store, so, um, I'm really happy to have visited there, um, but anyway, here's the front here with Jack White, uh, and then there's, like, a hawk, like a bird beside him, the spine, the other spine, and the back, so the songs on here are Missing Pieces, 16 Saltines, Freedom at 21, Love Interruption, the title track, Blunderbuss, Hypocritical Kiss, Weep Themselves to Sleep, I'm Shaken, Trash Tongue Talker, Hip Eponymous Poor Boy, I Guess I Should Go to Sleep, on and on and on, and Take Me With You When You Go. Um, this is an album that I've enjoyed for a while, ever since it came out back in April of 2012. I wasn't really too familiar with Jack White at the time, believe it or not, but I decided to give this album a go because I listened to a little bit of 60 Saltines and I loved it to death, so... I wanted to get this album, I wanted to listen to it and see if I liked it or not, and I loved it when I put this on, man. It's like one of the most 
amazing garage rock albums of 2012. It's not really a garage rock album all the way through, but it's like one of the best albums of 2012, period. So I'm already just gushing about this album because I love it to the core. So anyway, let me show you the booklet, the cover. Um, there's um, like a, the cover there has like Jack White with like a hawk or some sort of raven type bird beside him or something like that. There's like a hawk or a raven type bird um, on uh, this picture here along with a little poem it looks like Jack White wrote and said like a dedication in there for somebody or something. There's lyrics and credits and liner notes. Which, I always love this part of the album. The packaging and the lyrics. Wouldn't it be fair otherwise, but without the lyrics I can still handle that. Show you the booklet. And then there's like a couple of hippos right there, along with the rest of the liner notes. And then there's another photo of Jack White, which is pretty cool. Let me show you the CD, which has like a peacock on it or something. And then there's like a, an animated photo of like what looks like an autopilot smoking a cigarette or something. That's what it looks like. Which looks like um, it could be a painting, or like Jack White's own handwriting, which I think is pretty cool there. So it has really cool artwork, and it's different than the White Stripes album. The White Stripes records kind of involved mostly um, black, red, and white, but for this album, it's all black, blue, and white. So it's definitely not a White Stripes album, although there are songs on here that sounds like it could be on any White Stripes album. But he experiments with a ton of different sounds on here. Country, folk, hip-hop, a little bit maybe, uh, psychedelic. So this is probably Jack White's most experimental effort. Um, Get Behind Me Satan was like the most experimental White Stripes record. But in my opinion, Blunderbuss is a whole lot more experimental with that. Like there's two backing bands on this album. A, a male band and a female band. Um, along with a ton of other people. So, and plus he plays a ton of different instruments. Piano, guitar, bass, drums, everything. And he sang some of the vocals on here, but there are accompanying musicians on this album. Some people think it's all him, like some people claim that this album was, was performed all by him, but it actually was not. It, it had additional musicians uh, on it, so, so that's kind of the case right there. Uh, but, you know, anyway, let's uh, start talking about the tracks. Each track has such a distinctive flavor to it that I'm going to talk about each and every one track by track. Starting with the first track, Missing Pieces. This song really caught my attention. It has a smooth, almost funky, like uh, electric piano, like a Fender Rhodes piano, which opens the song. And then eventually there's that signature guitar that signature Jack White guitar riff, that, like that trademark, like that trademark guitar riff that we all know from Jack White coming in with some drums and some bass, um, and then the, the lyrics on it are kind of crazy. It talks about like, you know, not really physically but mentally losing body parts. Like you know, it kind of has to do with you know, sometimes someone controls everything about you when they tell you they just can't live without you. Because they ain't lying. They're going to take pieces of you, not physically, but emotionally. Uh, you know, they're going to take parts of you with them. Like, you know, it's kind of a song that has an original lyric concept to it. Which is really interesting, because Jack White can write really silly. Because Jack White can write crazy, somewhat silly lyrics, but not silly in a super cheesy way. Silly like, a, you know, in a clever songwriting kind of way. Um... And then, you know, there's some improvisation going on in the middle of it. There's, like, a guitar solo coming in, which kind of sounds like something you would have heard on Elephant or uh, Get Behind Me Satan a little bit. And uh, 
icky thump. Uh, but then there's a Fender Rhodes uh, electric piano solo that eventually comes in the song that totally, you know, keeps the song from being boring. Boring, which, uh, you know, is played by Jack White himself, uh, which makes sense because he's a really talented musician and can play just about any instrument he lays his eyes on. Um, track number two is called 16 Saltines, and let me just say this. This song, one of the best of 2012. Straight up in your face, bam, right there with a uh, sort of a... It has that garage rock feel that you would get off of a White Stripes album, like off of a White Stripes song, but someone has a bit of a different kind of twist to it. Like, um, the twist and turn on them, this song, it's kind of, you know, a little bit of White Stripes sound, but with like a bit of a punk rock edge to it. Like, kind of sounds a little bit like Pearl Jam or Nirvana or any of those grunge bands or Soundgarden or whatever. Like, it kind of, you know, sounds like uh, some some grunge bands out there, you know. It kind of sounds kind of like that a little bit. But then it has weird stuff going on in there, like there's a weird little organ in the background along with like uh, some, I think I heard like a cowbell and a guiro or something. And lyrically the song kind of shows, it's kind of a continuum of Jack White talking about the same, you know, uh, persona that he like talks about on most of the White Stripe songs. Although most of the White Stripe songs kind of have to do more with like, um, you know, just still feeling like a boy and never, and trying to act like a man, but never really getting there. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what most of the White Stripe songs are about. Uh, but there's not a whole lot of it here on Blunderbuss, but there is, uh, uh, that same person out that, uh, Jack White is, like, discussing on this album, as he did on an album like Elephant, or De Style, or, uh, whatever. Track number three is called Freedom at 21. This is a song that's really experimental a little bit, kind of has a hip-hop edge to it. There's two drum tracks on here. There's one that's like real drums, and another that's like a drum machine echo sound effect. Like, I don't know if it's a drum machine or if it's like just uh, the drums echoing on one track, but you know, it sounds pretty cool. If you listen to it through headphones, you'll see how creative and how there's some comparing and contrast here between the instrumentation. And in the background, there's an upright bass played with a bow, which is really interesting. Um, and uh, in the middle of it, sure, there is a guitar riff in the song, but there's a crazy distorted guitar solo towards the end of the song that sounds really, really cool. Which actually sounds more like a synthesizer, actually. Like, some people claim that there is synthesizer on this record. But believe it or not, there's no synthesizer on this album, but sure, the guitars do sound a little bit like a synthesizer, so it makes sense that some people may be claiming that statement, even though it may not be true. Um, track number... Oh, and I forgot to mention on track number three, Freedom at 21, Jack White doesn't really sing the words on this song. He's doing a spoken word thing, almost rapping the lyrics. Not really rapping the lyrics, but... It almost sounds like he is, like, you know, it's kind of a strange thing at first, but as it grows on you, as you understand it more, you get used to it. And uh, the lyrics are kind of about, like, this woman who, like, obviously, you know, thinks that she's gonna have a smile on her face once uh, she, like, you know, serves justice on him or something like that. That's kind of what the song kind of has to do with, pretty much, you know, like, this girl doesn't care what, like, what wounds she's inflicting on Jack White or what color of bruises he's living on, he's leaving on him because she's got freedom in the 21st century. So yeah, it's kind of why it says it's freedom at 21. Not, it's not like having freedom at the age of 21, but rather having it at the 21st century, like now at this time. Track number four is uh, called Love Interruption. And uh, this is a song that caught my attention a little bit, too. It has a, a few instruments. It's pretty minimal, stripped down. But there's some different elements going on in here. 
Uh, it's an acoustic guitar accompanied by some electric piano noodling, along with, um, you know, some clarinet and bass clarinet played by Emily Boland on this song, along with Ruby and Manfu doing the nice harmonies over Jack White's lead vocal. The lyrics on in here are kind of strange, but kind of cool. It talks about, like, it doesn't really talk about love in a positive way. It talks about it in, like, a negative and somewhat violent and dark way. Which, you know, may surprise you at first. You may kind of be all like, who? The first time you heard it. Sorry, that voice sounded... Sorry, that um, sound sounded really weird, but... Um, it may make you kind of gasp and kind of jump a little bit when you hear these lyrics. But I think you get used to them a little more. And I'm talking about like the lyrics like the opening ones where Jack White says, I want love to roll me over slowly. Stick a knife inside of me and twist it all around. Like, you know, it's kind of a... Right off the bat, you showed, it shows Jack White, you know, getting kind of crazy. and But at the same time, really intriguing and original and deep with his lyrics. So I think the song, lyrically, is one of the most interesting. But also, it may be uh, a pretty, like... It may be a pretty, you know, uh, striking moment at first. But as you get used to it, you learn to love the song a little more, like this is kind of uh, how the song is, like at least for most people, although it wasn't that surprising for me because I'm used to hearing really edgy lyrics, but kind of cartoonish lyrics to it. Track number five is the title track, Blunderbuss, and this is a nice little ballad. I know some people hate it because they think it's boring, but to me there's actually while it definitely is not as it's while it's definitely not as interesting and probably one of the weaker songs on this album, it's definitely not a bad song. There's still an interesting element to it, like the like for example the romantic interplay with the pedal steel and the fiddle on this one. Um, there's there's no fiddle credited in the liner notes, but I do hear one on the song because sometimes you know people they do tend to forget things in the liner notes sometimes, but you know. It's just because, you know, they don't pay as much attention to it like they should, but that's alright. That's not really too big of a mistake, that's for sure. Um, and uh, the lyrics on here, it's kind of hard to know the meaning of them. The lyrics kind of are, you know, just kind of, uh, but, you know, the sound of it is pretty interesting. The piano and the upright bass sounds pretty good. The guitar riff sounds alright. Uh, but this is probably, you know, one of the weaker tracks, although it's still a nice, beautiful, gorgeous ballad, that's for sure. But just not, like, uh, at the same level of greatness as some of the other songs on this album. Like, uh, for example, the next track after this one, track six, Hypocritical Kiss. Uh, this song, it may be considered a throwaway to most other people, but, um... It, this is actually one of my favorite songs on the album. The piano on it, it sounds pretty good, as well as the acoustic guitar riff, and the lyrics on it uh, are pretty good as well. Um, the lyrics on the song are pretty good as well. It's kind of talking about how, you know, um, like, you know, he's talking about, like, a boy on a street that, like, knows nothing, um, who doesn't know how to read, but, you know, he tells him, like, look at my face when it's, when it says, yeah, I've read that book to, sort of a song kind of about, like, you know, selling your own mother out and then betraying your dead brother with a hypocritical kiss. Um, with another hypocrite, with another hypocritical kiss. Um, so this is kind of a song that you may not understand the meaning, you know, quite, you know, um, that well at first, but I think... As you listen to the lyrics and realize how interesting Jack White's wordplay and lyrics can be, you kind of, you know, get it. Uh, so it's a pretty good song right there. Track number seven is called Weep Themselves to Sleep. Um, and this song is another one that really stuck out to me. Like, the lyrics on here, they're kind of dark and deep, but, you know, Yet at the same time, you know, the sound of it's still excellent, and uh, the lyrics on it are still really intriguing to listen to. That's for sure. Uh, there's a weird little guitar solo in this one, 
like there's a really dramatic piano riff on it that totally sounds like something you would hear in like some sort of like old drama movie or something like that like the piano in there kind of reminds me of a of an old drama movie or something like that um, but the guitar solo on here is really weird it's got the sputtering amplifier like the amplifiers are kind of stuttering and shaking a little bit on the guitars like they're being burnt down to the ground or something but you know I think that sounds really interesting that Jack White decided to make that little guitar mistake effect and make it sound like something that would be proper that would be that would be just right for a song like you know Jack White can the cool thing about Jack White is that he can you know like seriously he could take a broken guitar and still plug it into the amplifier and still make it sound incredible like like you know he could like you know like he could you know take a guitar that's you know been ruthlessly smashed by somebody plug it into an amplifier and it would still sound amazing in my opinion so Jack White's kind of a guy who likes to stay busy but he's not afraid to like try new things so this album really shows that he's a guy who's courageous enough to try new things so yeah I'm really intrigued by that fact right there um, the instrumentation on here is really simple but at least uh, a couple of them like the piano and the electric guitar still have sort of you know weird cool things going on with them so those are the two instrument elements in the song that really stuck out to me track number eight is called I'm Shaken and this is a cover of a song by Rudolph Toombs and believe it or not and believe it or not, I haven't really heard the um, original version by Rudolph Toombs. But let me just tell you, the cover is excellent. In fact, every time I listen to this song, I just want to turn it up loud no matter what. No matter how loud it is, I just want to turn it up and just rock out to it. Like, you know, with that catchy little guitar riff accompanied by an upright bass, um, some drums and like some shakers, and then the vocal on here is really distorted. And there's these nice little background vocals on here coming from some female background singers on here, which sound pretty nice too. Like, I think the female background singers really just show how Jack White is really good at experimenting with a little bit of, like, soul and R&B sort of feel. Like, uh, that's true right there. And then Jack White does a cool little guitar solo in the middle of it. Um, a little guitar solo in the middle of it, which is, like, really distorted and cool and sounds like it could be on any White Stripes album, that's for sure. Um, track number nine is another one of my favorites on this album, Trash Tongue Talker. And uh, this song is a lot of fun. Like, this song, you know, it may be considered a throwaway to some, but this song is awesome. The piano on it is great, the drums and tambourine on it are excellent as well. Um, as well, along with that weird little electric guitar riff and there's a really cool, like, a, a warm bass line on here. Not really a fuzzy, distorted bass, but, like, the bass line it sounds really cool. I always love to hear sort of the bounce effect on the bass, a little do in there. And, um, like, uh, the song has kind of crazy things going on with the lyrics. It kind of talks about, like, um, like, you know, it could be a song where, um, Jack Wade is kind of talking about a girl who's been like hassled by his parents who's just nothing but a trash tongue talker and then he ran and then Jack White randomly put some lyrics in there about like two monkeys jumping on a bed one falling on the ground and then the other monkey calling the doctor saying another body dead on the ground so it's like kind of a little twist on that monkeys jumping on the bed thing because when you were a kid it was probably just um, the, the other monkey called the doctor saying uh, one fell down but in here it's another body dead on the ground so it sort of shows it's kind of um, an adult version of like uh, that um, it's sort of like an adult like more mature version of like that you know quote from a story that you used to hear when you were a kid or something like that um, track number 10 is probably the most country Americana sounding song on here called Hip Hep Anonymous, Poor Boy. It's got like a mandolin in there and some nice piano, catchy guitar riffs. Like a, 
catchy acoustic guitar riffs and upright bass riffs in here along with like the drums sound like they're being played with like some brushes or something could be brushes and a stick at the same could be brushes and two sticks at the same time but it could just be brushes I think I'm hearing on this one so this is totally an old school sounding country influenced song that's kind of a song about like how he's kind of you know talking about how you know He's talking about like a poor boy who obviously is trying to be rich, but he can't really get there. Um, and he like goes around and around in circles, singing the blues. Um, <laughs> blues. So like uh, this song totally, you know, lyrically it's pretty interesting. And uh, the instrumentation on it is all catchy. It's like a really cute and heartwarming song in my opinion. Like... You know, not cute and like, it's not like bubblegum or anything like that, but rather it's like cute and heartwarming in a very clever way, that's for sure. Um, for way, that's for sure. And uh, believe it or not, I've never really looked up the word eponymous before, but I'm going to have to look it up after. But I'm probably going to have to look up that word after, after this video. Track number 10 is called, I Guess I Should Go to Sleep, and this is a song that's considered a least favorite for most people, and I have to agree with them. It's a good song, don't get me wrong, it's not a bad song, but it is a least favorite track on here for sure. It's kind of a throwaway moment on here. The instrumentation on it sounds good, but the songwriting and the vocal harmonies, those two sound pretty lazy for me. Like, the songwriting's kind of just random, this guy who... He's been walking for so long and wants to go to bed and wants to watch the news upstairs because that's another way to lose his walking blues. Like, the lyrics on here kind of feel kind of weak and kind of meh. But, you know, the same thing here with the, the vocal harmonies on here. Uh, the vocal harmonies on here, like, you know, just like the lyrics, kind of lazy and painful and just hard to hear. So... It's still a good song, but there's a couple of issues with, that I kind of have with it a little bit. But it's not like I can't listen to it. Because to be honest with you, most people, uh, when they skip a song, it's because they hate it. But even if I don't really like the song all that much, I don't like to skip it. Because to me, I like to listen to an entire album, no matter what, uh, because that's just how I am with albums. Track number 12 is called On and On and On. And it has a nice little pedal steel intro to it. Uh, but, you know, there's some weird things going on with it a little bit. Like, there's the drums with, you know, brushes there. Kind of like the music you would hear in, like, the background of a Charlie Brown special or something. Like, the drums play with the little brushes. Kind of like Americana music, sort of. Um, but it's got a weird thing going on. Jack White's voice is a... Jack White's actually singing, playing acoustic guitar, and playing piano all into a Leslie speaker, um, which I think is really cool and unique for him. While there is a regular acoustic guitar riff and piano riff without the Leslie speaker, but it's cool how Jack White can, you know, do such crazy things with uh, the instruments he plays. Like, for example, putting a Leslie speaker on them. Like, for example, putting a Leslie speaker on them. And uh, the harmonies on here sound pretty nice, so it's kind of a song. It, it sounds a little bit like Crosby, Stills, and Nash, except a little less passionate than that. I wish there was a little more added passion to the song. In fact, the critics, in fact, uh, not the critics.